My friends, fear is a terrible thing. Fear paralyzes. People can be walking around with all kinds of fears that only become discovered when something happens. Those disciples in today's gospel lock themselves away in fear. And there seems to be no exit strategy. In a sense, they are expecting to experience the same fate as their master. So their fear is kind of justified. It's certainly real. We know what happened to their master. And they, the disciples, only knew it too well and expected the same. The Gospel tells us, though, that in the face of this fear, which locks people in, there is an exit strategy. There is a way out of that locked room. And that is Jesus. Jesus comes into this scenario and he brings peace. Jesus comes with peace. And he offers a greeting of peace, mentioned to us in that gospel portion. Peace be with you. He breathes the Spirit <coughs> into those disciples. And everything has changed. There's a complete transformation. They are transformed from a state of fear into a state of boldness and outreach. They experience a new freedom. They are able to look back at everything that has happened with an understanding. And look forward to the future with hope. And having received the Spirit, this new Spirit, they are commissioned to go out and to share that new Spirit with the multitudes of people who need it badly. As the Father has sent me, so am I sending you. So they are sent out on mission. The word mission comes from a Latin word, which means being sent out. Being sent out with a message. And what is that message? The message is love. God's love. The victory of the Lord over sin, suffering, and death. And this message is proclaimed under the auspices of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes when we might have difficulty in understanding what is this spirit all about? In simple terms, the spirit means love. 
the bond of love that exists within the Godhead, between the Father and the Son, which is poured out into the world at Pentecost, where everything is changed because of that. The Spirit is the second person, the, the, the third person of the Trinity, poured out into the world. And that changes everything. There is one Spirit, but a variety of gifts. Just to go back again to explain what the Spirit is all about. The Spirit is love. The bond of love in the Father and the Son poured out into the world at Pentecost, which in a way, of course, marks the beginning of the church as we know it. And how the church proclaimed a message under the auspices of the Holy Spirit. And how that spirit is with us, with us right now. The Lord is present to us right now, in and through his spirit. The spirit which we receive at baptism. And what we are called to do is to decipher the gifts of the spirit how we have received as individuals, how we have received the gifts of the Spirit, and how we are called as well to appreciate the gifts of others. It's very important to remember that we are all gifted in some way or another. Every person here in the church is gifted in some way or another. And that even includes the parish priest. We are all gifted in some way or another. Nobody has all the gifts. No group of people has all the gifts. Nobody has a monopoly. St. Paul speaks about those gifts in the second reading. A variety of gifts and the purpose of those gifts, the gifts of the Spirit. The Spirit who guides us, inspires us, leads us. And St. Paul compares the gifts of the Spirit to the body. We know that the body is made up of various parts. Each component has a function. Of its own. But each component contributes to the well being of the whole, to the well being of the body. And that's why the gifts are given. They are given as a contribution, benefiting the body as a whole. So we have to harness those gifts of the Spirit. They need to be harnessed in every individual in a way that contributes to the benefit of the body, the benefit of the community. Here we're talking about a community of faith, of hope, of love. Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit, was a great moment of transformation because the coming of the Holy Spirit meant and means that the Lord continues to be with us in this very special and spiritual way. He is with us in and through his spirit. 
And that spirit is the energy force. It is the petrol, the diesel, that moves the engines of our lives. Such is the power of the spirit. It's empowering. It is ever present. And we pray for the coming of the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit, and they shall be created. And you shall renew the face of the earth. We say that prayer to the Holy Spirit. To fire us up, to renew us, to be with us, to inspire us, to be our advocate, our consoler, our strengthener. That's precisely what the Spirit is. He is always with us, enlightening us, giving us wisdom, helping us to love, helping us in our faith and in our hope. Come Holy Spirit, we stand now and bless our